So let's talk about global water consumption. And of course, we can only consume fresh water, which includes surface water, such as streams and lakes, and groundwater, which involves pumping water out of an aquifer. Water use may be in-stream or off-stream, consumptive or non-consumptive. In-stream use, which is inherently non-consumptive, uses water that stays in the river or lake. So we see this with hydroelectric power plants or dams where the water is used as it flows by the dam, but it's not consumed. Off-stream water use is water that's removed from a river, lake, or groundwater, and this water may be consumptive. In the case of consumptive use, an example would be agriculture, where crops are irrigated and the plants use the water to create new biomass and to transpire so that water is not returned. In non-consumptive use, um, water may be used like in, in a municipal use by people. It's flushed down the toilet, it goes to a water treatment plant, is treated, and then it can be returned to a river. Water use around the world is not equitable. So people, the average person in the U.S. uses about 156 gallons of water a day. In France, it's 77 gallons a day. 38 gallons a day in India, and only three gallons a day in Mali. So people in the U.S. use often more than 10 times the amount of domestic water than people consume in many developing countries. The bar charts on this slide demonstrate a couple of points about global water use. First, we see that the blue part of the bar is the largest indicating that most of the water that is extracted and consumed globally is for agriculture or growing food. And indeed, that's about 75% of water use. Industry, the red part of the bar, followed by municipal or public use is in green, are the next largest extractors and consumers of water. Second, we see that all types of water use are growing globally. This is because the human population is growing and so the, these curves mirror growth that we see in population, which is the black line. Also, technology enables us to extract water more efficiently and more easily so we can use it. Um, alternatively, technology is also helping us to be more efficient with water. So in the United States, we're not seeing an increase in water use over time, even as our population grows, because we're starting to be more efficient with our water. In general, hotter and drier countries have to irrigate crops more to keep them alive. So on this global map, countries that are red or orange use the largest percentage of the fresh water that they withdraw for agriculture. The blue and purple countries use the lowest percentage of water for agriculture. So we see from this chart that countries in the mid latitudes are most likely to be orange or red, and these regions on Earth tend to be dry compared to tropical regions and hot as compared to cooler latitudes closer to the poles. The red countries on this chart found in Northern Africa, the Middle East, and Southern Asia use more than 75% of the water they withdraw for agriculture. This bar chart is showing basically the same information as we saw on the previous slide, but in a more quantitative format. So we see that Africa and Asia devote the highest percentage of their water for agriculture. These are very warm, arid regions. And then cooler and wetter Europe only uses about 21% of its water for agriculture. The Americas are in the middle at about 50% of the water withdrawals being used for agriculture, making an average globally of about 70 to 75% of all freshwater withdrawals being used for agriculture. Industrial usage of water tends to dominate over agriculture in developed nations with cool climate, such as Canada and parts of Europe. In some of these nations, up to 90% of all water is used for industrial purposes.